would not think that this kindly looking old gentleman feeding his fish and playing with his grandchildren was once regarded as divine by many of his fellow countrymen. Nor would you think that he once formally approved one of the most brutal acts in modern war, the surprise Japanese attack on the American Pacific Fleet based at Pearl Harbor, which brought America into the war. The Emperor Hirohito was 40 at the time, but he survived the defeat of his country, preserving his chrysanthemum throne as a symbol of continuity in a transformed Japan. centuries, the lives of the Japanese people were ordered by Japan's ancient state religion, Shinto, or the way of the gods. In Shinto belief, Japanese emperors were direct descendants of the sun goddess, in a theoretically unbroken line which stretched back for two and a half thousand years. Hirohito's upbringing was strict. His empress was chosen for him, and if she did not produce a male heir, he was expected to find a concubine who would. In 1921, the 20-year-old Hirohito visited Europe. In England, he became a special friend of the Prince of Wales, later the uncrowned king, Edward VIII. No Japanese imperial prince had made such a tour before him, and it symbolized the two worlds in which Japan lived. was the world of ancient Shinto custom in which the emperor was enthroned as a divinity and the world of industrial development to which Japan came late, borrowing many ideas from the West. When he ascended the throne in 1926, he was known under the name Hirohito, or as the Japanese would pronounce it, Hiroshito. In fact, they never pronounce it. He is known to them in ordinary conversation as Tenno Heike, meaning a celestial emperor, or as sometimes loosely translated, son of heaven. It was necessary at, th at the time of his ascension for the court sages to choose a name for his reign. And this would be the name by which he will be known in history after the name Hirohito or Hiroshito is forgotten. The name chosen by the sages was Showa, meaning enlightened peace. Ironically, the first part of his reign led not to peace, but to war. A resplendent image on a white horse, Hirohito was a show emperor in these years of Japanese militarism. The martial tradition of Japan, springing from the days of the samurai warriors, was being taken over at this period by an imperialist uh, fascist clique who desired to make Japan the uh, preeminent power in Asia. They used the emperor as a symbol to grip the imagination of the people and obtain uh, their support, popular support, for the ends uh, of this small clique.
militarists promoted the idea of the emperor's divinity. People were forbidden to look at him when he passed on the street. All actions taken in his name had the sanction of the gods. Japan is a country with very few resources, except rainfall and people. They needed territory in which to exercise their talents for organization and production. Uh, they saw this just across the water in China. Hirohito's early life coincided with Japan's growing power. Russia was defeated in 1905, Korea annexed in 1910, and by the 1930s, Japan was in Manchuria, where she set up a puppet state with the puppet emperor in defiance of the League of Nations. It is a matter of common knowledge that Japan's policy is fundamentally inspired by a genuine dare to guarantee peace in the Far East. He was repelled by the air of militarism that surrounded him, and yet he was conditioned by his background to do as he was told, in short. Essentially, he, I think, followed his training, which was to uh, remain passive and to be the symbol that all of his ancestors had been. For the men who spoke in the emperor's name, Japan's destiny went beyond words. Japan is not bent upon conquest and has no desire to detach or annex any part of China. What our government and people want is peace and security in the Far East. With China's millions, Japan has no quarrel, nor have those millions anything to fear from Japan. Japan's expansion continued. Other powers, notably Britain and America, felt their interests were threatened. Hitler's Germany was Japan's obvious ally against Soviet Russia, and the Nazi Ribbentrop drew up a pact. Germany and Japan, who are not prepared to tolerate these activities any further, have now taken action. World War was in the offing. America's oil embargo threatened Japan's destiny. In Washington, Japanese envoys negotiated up to the very last minute. Gentlemen, you all know how difficult my mission is. But I'll do all I can to make it a successful one for the sake of two countries, Japan and the United States. In Tokyo, the momentous decision had been taken to attack Pearl Harbor. To us who were there, it was uh a completely unreal morning. We couldn't imagine that the Japanese would dare to uh, attack the United States in such a manner. And all day long, uh, people were uh, looking at each other and saying, uh, it can't have happened. The evidence available today is that uh, the emperor opposed uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor and uh, indeed the idea of a war against the United States and Britain. But, uh, like the whole Japanese nation, in fact, uh, he was caught up in events and found himself uh, powerless uh, to change the course of the nation. In a matter of months, Hirohito's empire expanded to the frontiers of India, to the coast of Australia, and halfway across the Pacific. But in attacking America, Japan had gone too far. The gods of war turned against her. Inspired by their warrior traditions and their loyalty to the emperor, the Japanese died fighting for every inch they had occupied. Few surrendered, except some Korean and other non-Japanese conscripts. America's will to win was expressed in Roosevelt's last speech to Congress. It's a long, tough road to Tokyo. It's longer to go to Tokyo than it is to Berlin, in every sense of the word. 
the defeat of Germany will not mean the end of the war against Japan. On the contrary, we must be prepared for a long and costly struggle in the Pacific. But the unconditional surrender of Japan is as essential as the defeat of Germany. As the Allies fought their way back, grim evidence of Japanese savagery in war came to light. To Hirohito's countrymen, a defeated foe was unworthy of life. The Allies now braced themselves to invade Japan herself. They expected casualties to be over a million. Firebombing reduced Tokyo to ruins, where men looked in vain for ancient landmarks. Hirohito's days as the glorious Mikado seemed likewise numbered, although his warlords refused to consider surrender. But in early August, Japan's fate was decided in an altogether new and devastating manner. The atomic bomb changed everything. While his cabinet dithered, Hirohito acted as no emperor had acted before him. Breaking with all tradition, he broadcast in person to his stunned people his acceptance of the surrender terms. To our good and loyal subjects, despite the best that has been done by everyone, the gallant fighting of the military and naval forces, the diligence and assiduity of our servants of the state, and the devoted service of our 100 million people, the war situation has developed not necessarily to Japan's advantage, while the general trends of the world have all turned against her interest. Moreover, the enemy has begun to employ a new and most cruel bomb, the power of which to do damage is indeed incalculable. Should we continue to fight, it would not only result in the ultimate collapse and obliteration of the Japanese nation, but it will also lead to the total extinction of human civilization. Such being the case, how are we to save the millions of our subjects or to atone ourselves before the hallowed spirits of our imperial ancestors? This is the reason why we have ordered the acceptance of the provisions of the Joint Declaration of the Powers. The hardships and suffering which our nation is to be subjected to hereafter will certainly be great. However, it is according to the dictates of time and fate that we have resolved to pave the way for a grand peace for all the generations to come by enduring the unendurable and suffering what is insufferable. We are gathered here, representatives of the major warring powers to conclude a solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. It is my earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan and the Japanese government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. The Emperor's fate seemed certain. Most people assumed he would be put on trial as a war criminal. His future, however, turned out to be very different. As head of the occupation forces, General Douglas MacArthur held more absolute power than any Japanese emperor had known. In a famous meeting, MacArthur summoned Hirohito to his presence. The general needed him to help keep order. 
Accepting sole responsibility for Japan's conduct of the war, Hirohito now came into his own. The emperor remained a person uh, of dignity uh, whom the Japanese could turn to in this agonizing hour of extremity. The emperor had told the people to uh, submit to the occupation gracefully and submit they did. There was not even a sign of resentment, much less hostility. War trials got underway. General Tojo was among those who would be executed. He had been prime minister at the time of Pearl Harbor. We think of Tojo as a dictator, like Mussolini or Hitler. But I believe he was, according to Japanese custom, merely a forceful figure in a consensus and the spokesman of that consensus. In helping toward the democratization of Japan, the emperor went on the radio to deny his own divinity. The emperor had never believed the story that he uh, was divine. Of course, uh, for him to go on the radio, and in fact, everything he did at this time was painful departure from custom. It was a time when he had to take actions that he had been conditioned against taking. Now he had to play uh, a positive role, and uh, he rose to it with uh, magnificence. With the Korean War, Japan's fortunes took a turn for the better. The American need uh, for mechanical equipment during the Korean War primed the pump for the recovery of Japanese industry. Almost seven years after the atomic bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the man who had given the order, President Truman, brought the occupation to an end with a peace treaty. United Nations as the first essential step toward a firm and lasting peace. This does not mean that the slate's been wiped clean. The United States has not forgotten Pearl Harbor and Bataan, and many of the other nations represented here have similar memories that will not be easily erased. The new Japan will not find the world entirely friendly and trusting as we approach the peace table. Let us be free of malice and hate to the end that from here on there shall be neither victors nor vanquished among us, but only equals in the partnership of peace. With the peace treaty, Japan signed a mutual defense pact with the United States. The Soviets had tried unsuccessfully to participate in the occupation of Japan. Now, communist agents tried to destroy the democratic system MacArthur and Hirohito had constructed. The new parliamentary assembly also had its teething troubles. Actually, to them, democracy uh, is to some extent anarchic, and they are uh, confronted with a situation for which they have no rules. The marriage of the emperor's daughter to a commoner was another departure from tradition which helped popularize the monarchy. The emperor uh, shows himself in many ways to be a man of warm uh, human emotion. It's known that he keeps in touch with the everyday life of ordinary Japanese by watching uh, soap operas, <laughs> uh, which, uh, you know, give him some idea of how his people really live. Japanese had caught up with the Western world with a vengeance. American occupation in the Korean War enabled the economy to surge ahead. The economic resurgence of the New Japan is the ultimate uh, expression of the uh, Japanese personality. They have become innovative. The old Japan of the cheap imitation is gone. 
Now uh, you have the Japan of uh, invention taking the lead in industrial uh, development. The opening of the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 1964 signified Japan's recovered status in the world. Hirohito had become a model constitutional monarch. He was honored both in his person and in the respect other nations felt for the new Japan. In 1971, he returned to London, which he had visited 50 years before as a young crown prince. The wheel had turned full circle, but what a tumultuous time the intervening years had been. And so, through this extraordinarily turbulent period in Japanese history, there stood the one inspiring figure of the emperor, Hiroshito, or Hirohito performing as an emperor of Japan is expected to perform. What of the future of the chrysanthemum throne? No one can say at this point. It may depend upon the performance of his successors. One thing is certain. The memory of Hiroshito or Hirohito will remain fresh in the minds of future Japanese generations, perhaps forever, as Showa enlightened peace.